he's been a very pleasant surprise this year for uh, Jack and his coaching staff. Hassan Young is coming up upon the uh, hundred shot mark of the season already. You can see why he's not shy about putting it up. But you can also see why he's shooting around 40%. Not always a good shot. Away from the ball, we've got a whistle and a foul. Robert Harris picked up the foul. Yeah, they got Robert here pushing in the back. Aston Abdullah comes in, and he goes in for O'Connor, so that's going to take Bernaski. Oh, a great play there by Matt Clemens to save that ball off of Abdullah. Just bounced it right off his head. Brent Beamer will come in. Now Niagara will have Bernaski at the two-guard spot, Beamer at the three spot. People say, oh, how did he make that transition? That's, that's why. Ah, you could do that. Actually, he could actually put Beamer at two and leave Bernowski at small forward. Got some interchangeable parts. Well, I'll tell you what, this, the officials are whistle happy today. There's no flow to this game because of all the whistles. 15-7 with, uh, you know, played a little over 10 minutes, 10 minutes, 52 seconds. That's the first foul on Young. Taylor and Clemens play catch. Martino hasn't gotten many shots off and misses that one. Jobody rebound. They've done a good job to cover Martino and he's had to force a couple of threes. Beamer looking for a three in transition. Can't get it. Goes down the blocks to Young. Young falls to his backside. No call there. In transition, UB. Can't get it. Ball controlled by Wheeler. Wheeler the drive. Jobody altered that shot. Wheeler gets it back. Tanga Shaka gives off to Harris. And now we got a technical foul on the Niagara bench. Uh, not a good call. It wasn't that against is, Jack either. No, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, it was against one of his assistant coaches. And uh, that's not going to make Jack very happy because you don't want your assistants picking up fouls. That's awfully, uh, awfully early in the game to call a technical foul, too, because I, I didn't see a whole lot of things that were going on. They're just talking about all the push and shove. It's a very physical ball game. You know, there's been four minutes and 36 seconds played in this game without a point. Well, it's an emotional ball game. Both teams are keyed up because uh, it's a, such a big ball game. It's a hometown rivalry. And it's become a physical game, too. A lot of pushing. Niagara hasn't scored in more than five minutes. And this is uh, what's been their Achilles heel all year. And a 15-5 lead. Haven't scored since. It's now 15-9. Niagara and UB has the ball. Well, as these things usually go, Niagara's going to get the next call. You wait and see. And you see quite plainly Niagara back in the 2-3 zone again. Well, UB hasn't shown them they can beat them from the outside yet, so they may as well stay in the zone. Cross court, Clemens trying to drive around Beamer. Stops and pops. No good. Traveling call against Harris. Yeah, he got the ball. He got a little shoved by, by Young. Just gave him just a little bit of a, a shove to get him out of bounds. But I told you the next call would go to Niagara's way anyway. Yeah, I think that was the one you spoke of. <laughs> Came pretty quick. Johnson hounded. Over there by Wheeler. Nobody coming to the ball for Niagara, and we got a three-second violation. Brent Beamer standing in the lane, didn't move, and, and they just stood there mesmerized watching uh, Jeremiah Johnson dribble the ball. That was just great defense on, on the part of Wheeler. Eklos and Johnson in for UB, replacing Tangashaka and Harris. Bohane's not uh, shy about making substitutions. He brings them in and takes them out, brings them back in. Well, he's going to keep shuffling players out until he finds a combination that works. Clemens, bounce pass inside. And Klaus, nice strip from Jeremiah Johnson there since Niagara in transition. The UB gets three guys back in a hurry. Beamer, a three-point attempt off the mark. Nobody there but Wheeler for a rebound. 
Wheeler carried that one. Yeah, got away sure with did. it. Right in front of Ron Croxcroft, and he didn't call it. They just can't score UB. They just don't have anything going for them. Young rebounds, outlet to Johnson. Beamer can't get to the hole, pulls it back out. Niagara's drought is hit just about seven minutes right now. Johnson blocking foul, basket and a foul. Well, that was a good call by the official because he definitely stepped in when uh, when Jeremiah Johnson went up in the air. That was nowhere near a, a, a charge, so that was a nice call, a nice move by Jeremiah Johnson. Just Watson in the ball game, replacing Jermaine Young. Here's a replay. Yeah, he stepped right in, cut out, undercut him, and Jeremiah Johnson went up strong, put the ball off the glass. Second foul for Zayn Alclass, the freshman, and he goes to the bench with the two. 6.41 remaining in the half. Niagara looking to stretch the lead back up to nine with a free throw. Won't go. That was the first free throw attempt of the game for Niagara. UB has four in case you're counting. Another nice play by Jeremiah Jackson. He got into Wheeler and uh, made him uh, dribble that ball right off his leg. Jack lost the jacket during the technical. The tie got loosened up and the collar's open too. Oh, there was a cheap offensive foul against Jeremiah Johnson. Wow. Yeah, it was. It's a great <laughs> acting job by Wheeler, but Jeremiah did put his arm out. He, he did, did push off. So, you know, it was right in front of Foxcroft. There isn't a whole lot he could do. There wasn't any cover there. Couldn't say he didn't see it. You're right. He did stick his arm out and he, the UB player did a great acting job and it worked. Anyway, you look at it from a Niagara or an official's perspective, it's a cheap foul and it's called. Now we got another whistle underneath. Now Beamer is going to get called for his box out. Sometimes Brent on. gets carried away and he does things that aren't real smart. Now he, he pushed on that one. There was no reason to do it. It was a long rebound and it was away from him. That's a one and one for UB. You don't want to put UB at the line. They're good foul shooters. You want to give them opportunities to score when the clock's off. I was mistaken. Alcos did not go to the bench. Obviously, because he's got the free throw line hitting the front end of a one and one, a 73% shooter on the line this year. Seventeen eleven, your score with six thirteen remaining in the first half. Not exactly a scorer's paradise here at the Gallagher Center tonight. And it really comes from a lack of shots, not poor shooting, a lack of shots. Neither team. Well, both, teams do, both teams are doing a good job in the perimeter defense. They're, they're getting out on people and they're forcing them not to be able to make the passes that they want to make. That's the fourth team foul against UB. Beamer is holding after he has the ball knocked away by Young. Whoa! <laughs> yeah, it, was, it wasn't a bad call. I thought Young pushed Beamer out of the way. Even though Beamer was reaching down and, and looked like he was holding, I think uh, Young just pushed him right out of the way and right in front of Foxcroft. Well. You saw it differently. I'm confused. <laughs> <laughs> I saw Brent definitely reaching out and holding back Rasan Young uh, just after the, the ball, ball was knocked just loose. for the ball, Lou. Tennessee is Rashawn yet, even though I have a tendency to call him Rashawn, unfortunately. 5.37 left in the half. And Niagara by six. And another steal on the perimeter by Young from Beamer. And O'Connor comes with the hard foul. Good foul, not intentional. He got a lot of ball first. Yeah, he did. He got a lot of ball on it and didn't let him score. So I guess we got to call that a good foul. UB taking a little exception to that. Jeremiah Johnson, a little, a little player on the floor at 150 pounds, got a little mixed up and he saw the end of it. Yeah, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't get in front of Rashawn Young. Uh, Rashawn Young, he's a big boy. Calvin Murphy will have to be careful as he checks in with 5.26 left and two fouls, and Jeremiah Johnson will come to the bench. Jack just taking him out to talk to him a little bit. He wants him to push the ball a little bit more. He also wants him not to be stupid and pick up a dumb foul right here. And a little retaliation. 
Young, a good score for UB, not a particularly great free throw shooter. 68%, he makes the first of two. Well, despite opening up a 10-point lead, Niagara leads by just four with 5.26 to play. Well, that's what we talked about earlier. When you, sometimes when you get the big leads early, they dissipate very quickly, and uh, that's what's happened in Niagara. Niagara just two baskets in the last nine minutes. UB hasn't been that proficient either in that same span. They've only had a couple of field goals and a bunch of free throws. Watson rebounds the miss. O'Connor gives up a three cross court to Beamer. Murphy a three point attempt. That's long. Long rebound gathered in by Wheeler. UB's forcing Niagara to shoot from the outside, and if you don't hit those, it's going to be a long night. Well, last touch by Niagara player, and UB will get it. Timeout, Purple Eagles with 4.44 to play in the first half. Niagara leading 17-13. This is amazing. I mean, you just look at the running score of this game. As best as I've kept track, UB has three field goals. Seven free throws. Got into the line because they penetrated and caused uh, Niagara to make some uh, some not really intelligent fouls. Not more than 15 minutes of play, and they only have three field goals, yet they're not blown out of the game. No, they're right <laughs> in this game. But believe me, they're right in this game. It's a low-scoring game, and if you let UB hang around, that's when they hurt you at the end. You know, you can't let this team stay around because in the last four minutes of the game, they'll kill you. On the other hand, you look to Niagara for scoring. Chris Watson leads it away with 16 points. They've done a very good job on the interior of Niagara's offense. They've really cut off the passing, passing lanes. They can't get the ball inside. Anytime Watson has gotten the ball, he's been pushed out, out past where he'd like to be, and then they, they double down on him. So it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough for him to, to get off. And it, without him, uh, it, it hurts, hurts the team. Let's take a look at uh, MAC conference play, which will begin in earnest in just a couple of weeks. The only MAC game played was Niagara at Canisius, but you look at the overall records and you see, Bill, that's been a pretty even year for most of the teams in the MAC. Uh, Iona off to uh, the best start of, of the other clubs. Manhattan off to a good start at 3-1. Manhattan is off to a good start, and that's, uh, that's a little surprising to me with the coaching change and some people that left the, the program. That's a nice record for them at this time of the year. Commissioner Rich Enter in appearance at the Gallagher Center tonight making announcement that uh, Buffalo will be getting an NCAA. That's great news for Buffalo. They're going to get, in the year 2000, you get the NCAA regionals there. Well, they lob inside. Oh, won't fall. Watson knocks it out to Murphy. Cross court, Bernowski, a three point attempt. Spotted up very, very well. Jeff O'Connor saw him, he gave the skip pass across court. He just banged that one home. O'Connor averaging three assists a game, and now we got a double dribble against Wheeler, and they turn it back over to the Purple Eagles. Another unforced turnover for the UB Bulls. This is a big possession for Nag. If they can score here, put it up to nine or, or even 10 points, it'd be great. Murphy draws a foul, dipped his shoulder a little bit. Bernard Wheeler initiated contract contact. First on Wheeler and the sixth team foul against UB. So now Niagara will go to the line on the next whistle against the Bulls. Niagara again goes cross court over top. To O'Connor in the corner, to Watson, out to Joe Bedeen. That's a little far for him. Misses the shot. Rebounded by Johnson. Wheeler to Martino. Martino finally gets spotted up for an open look, and he hits a three. And Martino had a few things to say to Jeff O'Connor as they're coming down the court, too. Murphy turned it over. And Martino draws a foul, go to the line for two. He's a crafty individual, he's a tough kid, and uh, he can shoot the ball, he can drive to the basket, he just gets under your skin and causes a lot of problems. 
Chris Watson commits his second foul. So he'll go to the bench, as will Calvin Murphy. Oh, he can cut this down to a two-point lead for the, for the Purple Eagles. He hits these foul shots. Jeremiah Johnson back in, and Jermaine Young back in for Niagara. He just cannot let you be hang around. Martino, one of the more solid free throw shooters for UB. Hands two, and UB has done an excellent job at the line so far. Nine of 10 here in the first half, and that's why they're down by just two. 20 to 18. 312 to play in the first half. Jobody will go to the line. Got a foul on Rashad Young. That'll be his second. No, oh, excuse me, his third. Well, that's a big blow to Tim Cohane and UB. It sure is. He's going to have to replace him with Matt Clemens, who's not is anywhere near the athlete, but he's a pretty good outside shooter when he's on, which he hasn't been much this year. No, Matt Clemens 0 for 15 from three-point land this year. Niagara has a three-point lead. Three minutes to play in the half. Martino got O'Connor to leave his feet, but didn't get the ball down. It traveled. No, it was a good call. He did shuffle his foot as he tried to go around Jeff O'Connor, although Jeff made a cardinal mistake of jumping up in the air. Wheeler picking up Johnson right at half court and going belly to belly with him. That's the type of defense UV has played all game long. And it's been frustrating for Niagara. Look at that step around down low there. That's a jump ball. Possession arrow will favor UB. And nice move in the low post defense. UB plays very, very good interior defense, and they're always grabbing at the ball. That was Robert Harris. Now he's 6'4, 225 pound sophomore. I mean, that's got to be, you think, a mismatch for Jermaine Young at 6'8. But watch the defense. Step around, get that steal. Yep. Wheeler to Tangashaka looks for Martino. He pulls it back out. Tangashaka traveled again. He's done that more than once tonight. Well, he's not going to get around with Sean Young. It's, it's, he's just too big a body. And uh, he had to shuffle his feet when he tried to go, go around him. Tangashaka averaging just two points a game. Looks like he wants to do something with the ball down inside tonight. They got Wheeler. A couple times. That time Wheeler, yeah, picked up a Wheeler had a reach in. You know, a little bit of a hold. That's a it's an area of emphasis this year for the officials, the hand checking, and that's definitely with a hand check. That's gonna send Wheeler to the bench and bring Scott McMillan to the ball game, a 6'4 junior, and we're gonna see Alcloss and Johnson check back in. And out goes Harris and Tangashaka. It's been kind of like dual substitution with those two. Yeah, he's been moving people in and out the whole game. One and bonus for Jeremiah Johnson. He misses. Can't miss foul shots. And unfortunately, that's been a bugaboo for Jack teams the last couple years. Lemons with two. Nice pass from Jeremiah Johnson to O'Connor and he travels. I didn't see a travel. I thought there might have been a foul, but I, I really didn't see a travel on that one. The University of Buffalo can take its first lead of the ball game right here. It's down by one with 150 to play in the half. That's what we talked about in, in our pregame show and what we talked about early on here. You can't let them hang around because when you let them hang around, at the end of the game, they're ahead. John Young on the bench with three fouls, and there's another travel. Nathan Johnson, the 6'9 junior, 
UB's big men just are not comfortable handling the ball. That's not at all. No, they're not. And they're not they're not real fluid. They don't work hard enough to get open in the in the low post. And he had trouble there. That was the problem is he just couldn't find anybody to pass to. Luke Dilbert's into the ball game for Niagara. He missed the first five games with a stomach problem. He had two abscesses drained from his stomach just prior to the start of the regular season. Went home for a while to recuperate. And, and uh, Jack Armstrong has high hopes for the future of Luke Dilbert. And he's happy that he's been able to work him into the lineup here tonight. Yeah, it's nice to see him back. He's a nice young man, and uh, he, you know, he had that physical setback early on in the preseason. And that's in a, of a freshman year, and it's really difficult. Main Young. Five of eight on the line coming into this appearance at the charity stripe where he makes two. Big basket for Niagara gives him a three point lead with uh, just a little over a minute to go in the half. Martino's going to look to try and take control of this game offensively for UB. Spotting up, McMillan off the mark. Rebound for Nasty and he's fouled. Nathan Johnson came charging in there. <laughs> Jermaine, Jermaine Young just gave him a little bit of a chuck to tell him he did a good job. He almost knocked Nate right over. Robert Harris back in. Out goes Johnson. Nine seconds left in the half, and Bernaski at the line for Niagara. Both uh, teams at the 10 foul mark and above, so two shot fouls here. UB, we told you, none of 10 from the line. Niagara cannot boast of such statistics. You gotta hit the foul shots. They're free shots, and you've gotta be able to knock them out down. Four of nine for Niagara. 24-20. Under a minute to play in the half. There's another turnover. That's another unforced turnover, and that's it's been a killer for UB. Without those turnovers, they'd be uh, they'd be ahead in this game, but they just keep turning the ball over to Niagara. And Leonard Tanga Shaka comes in. Out goes Alcott. This is a 13 second differential on the shot clock and game clock, so Niagara's not going to be able to run this out without giving UB a good amount of time for a possession. Still, they spread the floor and try and use some of that clock. Then on the shot clock, Bernowski goes to work now. Penetrates. Nice move. Oh, the pass to Joe, but he couldn't dig it out around his shin. Almost lost it out of bounds. It'll be Niagara ball inbounding with three seconds on the shot clock. And Niagara takes a 20-second timeout. Jack Armstrong wants to design a play. That's a good call by Jack because they were a little bit confused what they were going to run with only three seconds left. But what happened in that situation is Bernowski did exactly what Jack told him to do, penetrate and dish off. He did it, penetrated well, dished the ball, but uh, Joe just wasn't ready to pick it up and put it home. He was open, too. Been a tough half for both offenses. Some of it defense and some of it just poor execution. It was. You know, uh, this is a tough game because it's a crosstown rival and the emotions are very high. And many times in their case, you have a, a rough game. O'Connor, a fall away three! Wow! <laughs> Reminiscent of the first game. Martina will take the last shot. Four seconds left. O'Connor knocks it away, dives to the floor. And the first half buzzer ends with Niagara on a big shot from Jeff O'Connor with momentum going into the locker room leading 27 to 20. We'll be back with some halftime stats and more in just a moment. This is Purple Eagles basketball on Adelphia Cable. Big.
back, relieved by seven as we get ready to start the second half. Lou Panessa along with Billy Gronin here at the Taps Gallagher Center. And Billy got to dig a little bit to find highlights in that first half. We'll yeah. give it a try, though. Yeah, you do a little bit. Uh, it's tough. It's been a, kind of a sloppy game, but it's because it's two crosstown rivals. There's Niagara set here, and it leads to a three-pointer by Hassan Abdullah. Now in transition. Nice skip pass over to Bernaski by uh, Jeff O'Connor. Bernaski just uh, knocked it home. Now at the end of the half, shot of the half. There it was, falling out of bounds, Jeff O'Connor with three seconds on the clock. Out of bounds play, he hit that big one, and that's why we have a seven-point lead right now for the Niagara Purple Eagles. Look at the ugly stats, the UB shooting 19%, but the turnovers, the real story. Yeah, turnovers, 14 turnovers for, uh, for UB. I'm surprised Niagara has that many. He has 13 turnovers. I didn't think they had that many. Uh, the only thing keeping UB in the game is their foul shot. They've hit nine out of nine foul shots. Chris Watson held scoreless in the first half for Niagara. Mike Martino leading score in the game with seven points. Jeff O'Connor with eight for Niagara to lead both teams. Wheeler uh, with three and Young with four for UB. Jeremiah Johnson and Abdul each had five for Niagara in the first half. Jermaine Johnson out of penetration, misses the land. Rebounded by Robert Harris. Foul trouble, big story, Rasan Young has three fouls.